us to another episode on ASOG 12 exams. So basically this is the ninth episode in this series where we are looking at the November 2022 Mathematics Paper 1. Let us look at question E15. Question A. Two similar solids P and Q are volumes 80 centimeter cubic and 270 centimeter cubic respectively. The height of the smaller solid is 8 cm, find the height of the larger solid. So basically the question is for us to find the height of the larger solid. What have we been given? We have been given the volume of a smaller solid to be a basically 80 cm cubic. Then the volume of a larger solid to be 270 cm cubic. Then the height of a smaller is 8 cm. The question is we need to find the height of the larger solid. So when you are dealing with uh, basically pro proportions and ratios, to use them you need uh, to use simplified ratios. So you simplify them in the lowest possible form. So the first thing that we need to do is basically find the ratio of the volumes in their simplified form. Once we do that then we can use the same ratio to find the height of the larger solid because the ratio in which the volumes will be will be equivalent or proportionate to the ratio of their eyes because these two are similar. This is where the key is. So we know that um, we have 80 centimeter cubic to basically 270 centimeter cubic. The first thing is what we can do is we can divide by 10 here both sides. We are not changing anything. We are just simplifying. Then we are going to end up with nothing but 8 centimeter cubic to to basically 27 centimeter cubic. This is what we are going to have. But because we need to find the ratios in distance. So what we do is in the simplified version so that these are not in derived unit which is cubic. So we find the cube root here then the cube root here. Once we find the cube root there we know that the cube root of a centimeter cubic is basically centimeter to basically again centimeter here. Then which number can we multiply itself three times to get to eight? So that number is basically a two. Two times two is a four times two, eight. What number can you multiply itself three times to get to twenty-seven? So that number is basically a three, which is the cube root of twenty-seven. So three times three is nine times three, twenty-seven. So we have three. So in the simplified ratio of the volumes is 2 centimeter to 3 centimeter. So now if you know this we can now say that in terms of volume if basically we have 2 centimeter in terms of volume volume is proportionate equal to 3 centimeter okay in terms of volume then in terms of height then remember this is a smaller then this is a larger. So if we in terms of height, the smaller is 8 cm, then what would be the value of the larger height? Okay, the height for the larger solid. Then at this point we can close multiply. So we are going to have 2 times uh, x, we are going to have 2x cm equals 8 times 3 to be 24 cm square because centimeter and centimeter then we divide by 2 centimeter 2 centimeter then that and that so we're going to end up with x is equal to then centimeter and 2 centimeter square we end up with centimeter 2 into 12 2, 2 into 24 is basically 12 centimeter so 12 centimeter is basically the answer here which is 12 centimeter remember when you are given the volume to find the proportionate ratio of the volumes you first of all try to simplify them in the simplest form then find the cube root of those 
then you are able to simplify them if you see the area you find the square root so basically this is the case for question a we move to question b so question b in the diagram f g h is a straight line f g is equal to 8 cm e g is equal to 10 cm and angle EFG is equal to 90 degrees. Find the value of sine EGH, which is basically this angle in terms of sine. So basically, let me just move to a new page where I'm going to zoom this so that you are able to see uh, clearly and follow easily. Okay, so the question is for us to find this uh, angle in terms of sine. That's what we are required to do. So, we can use uh, the famous Sukatoa. So, because we are required to find in terms of sine, so, we know that this is the part for sine. So, sine angle, this is equal to basically opposite over hypotenuse. That's it the case. So because we are required to find this angle, the first thing is we need to know this angle. Once we know this angle, the sign of this angle, then to find this sign of this angle, it will be just the negative of this sign of this angle. That's the principle. So now we know that uh, the opposite of this is basically this side. Do we know this side? We don't know. But since we know this is 90 degrees, we can easily find the x. So how can we find x? We can use a Pythagorean the, uh, theorem. So, the case that we shall call this to be small g, then this to be a basically f, small f, then where this is facing, small e. So, this tells us f square is equal to g square plus e square. That's basically what we know from a Pythagorean theorem. So, based on that, what we can do now is, we know what f is, f is 10, so it's 10 square is equal to uh, what is g g is what we are looking for which is g square then plus what is e so e we know is basically this which is 8 so 80 square then 10 times 10 is 100 is equal to what is uh, g we are looking for g square we don't know this is what we are looking for then plus uh, 8 times 8 which is 64 then once we know that we have 100 minus 64. Remember the moment this uh, 64 closes the equal sign it becomes a negative. Then uh, this is equal to g square. Then 100 minus 64 we have uh, basically in, uh, 36 which is equal to g square. Then we find the square root to find what g is. So 6. Because it's a positive number this is a distance. So g is basically equal to 6. So once we know what g is then it becomes much more easier and straightforward. Then we can use uh, this formula to find uh, this angle. Once we know this angle in terms of a sign, we just uh, do the negative sign of this to find the angle because it's 80 degrees. Remember, if you know this, the angle here is the negative of sign this angle. So what we do is basically we have sine theta. What is sine theta? Is this, this angle which is here. Okay, is equal to what is the opposite? The opposite is this value that we found, which is 6. Then divide by what is the hypotenuse? Is this distance, which is 10. Then we end up with sine theta is equal to uh, basically uh, 3 over 5 because we're dividing by 2. So 3 over 5. Okay, then once we have that, we know this is uh, the sign of that. But you're looking for sign. So therefore, sign E G H must equal to the negative of sign basically E G F. That's what it tells us. So what is this? So is it basically minus three over five as in the answer? So basically, this is how you answer uh, this question. Remember, if you know this sign, 
then the sign of this in terms of a value is just the negative of this sign because remember we are using the quadrants the quadrant so we say all students take chemistry so here if we, in the first quadrants all the trigonometry ratios or identity are positive in the next one sign is negative then we have tangent then we have cos so if in this one is a positive then in the next one because the next one is in the next quadrant it will be a negative the hence we are talking about the negative value there so it's that principle that we use so basically this is how you answer this question to get a full max